yourself behind the members. I think that would be good for a visual. So you can feel free to sign up behind the members and then we'll get started. <laughs> of hip hop. Uh, this summer I introduced a resolution that recognizes the impact hip hop has had on our communities and urges local governments to find partnership opportunities with the hip hop industry. This is about education, this is about a celebration of culture, and this is about the continuation of a movement. I want to thank those who've signed on to this valuable legislation and those joining me here today, Representatives Robin Kelly, Nakima Williams, and Corey Bush as we commemorate this golden anniversary. I also want to give a shout out to all of the organizations who have been so supportive of this resolution. Thank you to Pandora, Feed Media Group, Spotify, DEMA, the Recording Industry Association of America, the Recording Academy, Amazon Music, Center for Hip Hop Advocacy, Hip Hop Caucus, and Hip Hop Politics, who are actively working to promote the work of black artists and rising hip hop stars. Today we recognize hip hop, but we are also here to mark nearly 30 years since the passing of hip hop West Coast legend, Tupac Shakur, hence the outfit. I want to thank the Tupac Amaru Shakur Foundation for being represented here today. You know, I'm grateful that my district uh, hosted the Wake Me When I'm Free exhibition. I had the opportunity to experience it along with my staff and hundreds of thousands of other Angelinos. Thank you to President Sakiwa Shakur and Ray Love Tyson who flew all the way out from Los Angeles and who have been so critical across California advocating for the healing impacts of music on our children and families. You know, I grew up in New York when hip hop was fresh and new. I grew up listening to Big Daddy Kane and Roxanne, Roxanne Shante. I consider myself a child of hip hop, which is why it is so great to be able to have authored this resolution. You know, in the beginning, Hip hop was dismissed for being birthed by those who were deemed unsophisticated and unintelligent. It was blasted for being too raw and too black. And then it was threatened with silence by the government for being too extreme. And look at us now, standing right outside the United States Capitol, honoring this movement that has withstood all of these attacks and has essentially grown mainstream, contributing billions of dollars into economies across this globe. It's also very important that we celebrate arts now more than ever before, because we are in a moment in time when Republicans are denying American history, black history, where extremists are trying to silence black judges, black legislators, black athletes, black students, black advocates, black voices, black history. And this is about standing in resistance to all of that. That's what hip hop is all about. Teaching truth, being resilient, moving, celebrating, using rhythm, rhyme, beats, to heal, to educate, to stimulate, and to move forward. So I want to, with that, uh, bring Representative Robin Kelly up to say a few words and to make some introductions. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Shakur, Mr. Tyson, and thank you to Congresswoman Kamala Dub for bringing us here today. She said she's a child of hip hop, so I must be a mother of hip hop because every time I came home from work, it was blasting out of my doorway before I could even open my door with my uh, young children who are adults now. It is my privilege to join with you to celebrate this incredible milestone for hip hop and its contributions to our nation and our world. 
For decades, hip hop has captivated audiences and given artists a platform to voice their experiences and uplift their truth. This has been especially important, as you've heard, for black artists whose stories and experiences have often been ignored and discounted. It is impossible to overstate hip hop's impact on our culture from film, television, and even politics. Hip hop has united us, driven meaningful conversation, and amplified cultural and political exchange. Hip hop is now a global phenomenon that inspires new generations of young people to question the structures and systems that govern their daily lives. I am proud to honor the rich history of hip hop here today, and I thank everyone here for their commitment to this important light in our culture. It is now my honor to introduce. So Sakiwa is three minutes away. Uh, Representative Kelly was gonna introduce her. Uh, so we can answer any questions. If you have any, I would also like to uh, invite maybe someone from the recording industry to come up and say a couple of words as well. I know this is on the spot, but hey, we're from LA celebrating hip hop and hip hop is all about uh, freestyling, exactly. So, freestyle, freeform, freeform, freestyle. Hello, my name is Eric Sten Stensbog and I represent Beat FM. We're the B2B to C streaming company that's on, on track to stream 1 billion play starts this year to fitness and health apps, including Tonal and Nautilus, uh, Alamoves, uh, Lululemon, and others. And I just want to say, as the head of our curation team, uh, and also as a child of hip hop, that it has uh, massively enriched the lives of uh, so many uh, Americans and people across the world, and we see it. Uh, as we power uh, fitness workouts, right, and, and health and wellness, uh, hip hop is absolutely one of the most popular, uh, you know, 10 to 25% of all the music we stream are, is hip hop in aggregate. And it's because of the motivational uh, experience of it, both musically and lyrically, speaks to uh, people in persuasive ways that have never been heard before, including rock and roll and continuing into whatever the newest music forms that come onto the planet. And so um, it's really imperative and important that we uh, take a moment to take stock of this incredible art form and cultural heritage that we have uh, that's come from New York and it's transferred everywhere in the globe. And um, it's a privilege to be here, thank you. And I just wanna add that even though Republicans like to deny the importance of black culture and hip hop, some of them still find their ways making hip hop videos trying to create lyrics. So with that, I'd like to bring up a representative from the Hip Hop Caucus, and then I see Siki Wishing for a walk. Hello, hello, good morning. My name is Tanya Playhouse. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Hip Hop Caucus. It is an honor, and it's a privilege, and a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, Representative Public Dove, thank you, Congressman Kelly, thank you uh, for allowing us to be able to represent the Hip Hop Caucus is celebrating its 19th anniversary this year. In addition to 50 years of hip hop, we are also taking stock of what we have done within these 19 years coming up into our 20th year. I wanna say this, the Hip Hop Caucus is about a movement. Hip hop is not just a name. Hip hop is not just a music. It's not just a genre, it's a movement. And that's what the Hip Hop Caucus has come to be about. We are about moving in order to make sure that we can have impact and change for our black communities, for BIPOC communities, to ensure that we are affecting what is necessary in order to help bring about our liberation. The Hip Hop Caucus will continue to do that work and support and consolidation and coordination with those here today. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here. On behalf of our founder and president, Reverend Lennox Yearwood, who was not able to be here today. I want to represent, because you're right, we're all hip hop babies. Uh, we are excited to be able to celebrate, but also to talk about what is necessary in this movement. Hip hop has always been about telling truth, telling our story. That's what the caucus is about, narrative and storytelling and infusing our culture and what is necessary and how it is that we can impact environmental and climate change justice, how we can ensure that we are doing what is necessary to enact democracy reform, 
to economic justice and so much more. And so we thank everyone here today. We hope you understand what hip hop is really about. And it is a movement. And as we always say, and as Reverend Lennox here would always say, power to me.
I'm a third generation musician. I come from a long line of musicians. My grandfather was the first in our family, but really my great aunt, uh, Kat Calloway. My mother and my aunt were all musicians. My brother was my best friend. That's who I started off my music career with. Um, I came from tough beginnings, but hip hop was my vehicle to travel the world, to meet people that spoke different languages, had were separated by geography, history, by numerous things working against them. We had a common language in hip hop music. And um, today we stand the 13th of September, the day that Tupac died 27 years ago. And so while it's ceremonious and, and we're happy, happy and hopeful, it's also a solemn occasion for us usually on this day. So, yeah, so I want to thank everybody here. I want to thank the Congresswoman for having us out, our staff and everybody for inviting us out. Um, there was a time when people in hip hop didn't have a, a voice to stand, you know, in front of this building and, and speak the way we're speaking. And, and now we have a voice, we have representatives that us and represent where we come from and our struggles and challenges. Um, and I just want to thank you for having us out and also uh, rest in peace to our rest in peace.
helpful when dealing with natural disasters or major incidents, a government that helps seniors, the unhoused, the poor, the hungry, the young. We could be dealing with all of those things, but we're not. But you know what? Hip-hop talks about all of that, too. Hip-hop talks about how we like to forget about the poor, how we like to dismiss voices that are not our own. Hip-hop talks about the hypocrisy of the government, only looking to save a few and not addressing the needs of the many. So why not celebrate the 50th anniversary of hip-hop with a press conference today? When we're in the midst of all this bullshit chaos that is not talking about the truth. And Americans deserve us talking about the truth. And hip hop is about love and the truth. Thank you. Yes, ah, <laughs> Representative Clay Bush. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Um, <laughs> Closer, yes. Um, so, good morning, everyone. And first, uh, let me start by saying how excited I am to be here. I get to be here for this moment, but this, you know, um, this is a, a press conference where I get to smile and be happy and and uh, uh, not have to fight anybody. This is, you know, so I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for this invite in this moment. Um, a special thank you to Congresswoman Kamala Dove um, for all of your hard work and for highlighting this and and being able to be. Um, be this voice uh, to be able to make sure that this space is here right at the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, and Congresswoman Kelly and uh, Congressman Carter, uh, Congresswoman Williams, um, uh, not only is this a fun press conference, but it's an important one. Um, you know, we can't celebrate hip hop and its impact on our culture without also acknowledging, and I know we've already done that, um, I just heard it, um, but without today, I have say Tupac was what we would call and what I would call is why I was attracted to him let me just say he was a roughneck you know we call him back then. <laughs> um, but he was brilliant he was this skilled storyteller and he had this unique ability to use his music to express different uh, thoughtful and powerful messages he knew how to really make you think it's an honor to stand here today with his sister um, um, so, so wonderful to be here um, uh, with his sister, Sakiba, sexual, sexual set, I'm sorry, sexual set, she was here for, and the president of the, um, the president of the Tupac Foundation, uh, Ray Love Tyson, um, who sits on their leadership team, and just thinking about, it's been 27 years, um, and let me highlight your shoes, um, <laughs> at a press conference, I, I, gotta, I gotta say that because I can't, um, uh, but that's hip hop too. Um, it's been 27 years since Tupac was killed to his sister again um, and to the entire family to the Tupac Foundation. Thank you for all the work that you do to keep Tupac legacy alive for us and future generations. The influence and the impact of keeping that alive, he will forever be missed, uh, forever be loved and his, his truth and his legacy lives on through his music, his art and his genius. The first hip hop song I remember hearing, um, and it ages me a little bit, um, but it was The Message by Grandmaster Flash and The Furious Five. Since then, I've been hooked on the culture influences and the art form of hip hop, from MCing, DJing, graffiti, beatboxing, and breakdancing. All of this and more made hip hop um, different than anything we had ever seen. From the songs, to the clothes, to the music, like I remember watching B Street, Crush Grooves, um, Disorderly's Juice. I loved it all. Um, hip hop was always much more than music for me. It was a lifestyle. And so my deep love for hip hop quickly became a large part of my growing up. The music spoke to me. I remember joining forces with my brother to beg my mom for a boom box uh, for Christmas after hearing my radio by LL Cool J for the first time. I started to dress like what I saw in the videos from the skimpy clothes to the baggy clothes to the big gold bamboo hoop earrings and the fat gold chains. That was Corey. I loved hip hop and you could easily that you could easily dance to. So much so 
to where my brother and I, we would choreograph uh, dances and go uh, join talent shows. The St. Louis area where I grew up and now proudly represent played a massive role in the evolution of hip hop as well. Home to influential artists like Nelly, the St. Lunatics, Chingy, Huey, Smino, Big Boss Vet, and Sexy Red, Metro Boomin. These artists and producers helped to bring St. Louis and the Midwest to the national stage. Together they helped create a whole St. Louis sound and a St. Louis dance. But I've been a, fa a fan of uh, several artists over the years, as we all have. From Little Kim, Run DMC, N.W.A., Salt and Pepper, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick, Megan Thee Stallion, Mia X, Notorious B.I.G., DJ Quick, Uncle Luke, and Two Live Crew. Um, look, I don't, I don't discriminate. <laughs> De La Soul, TLC, Roxanne Shantae, Master P, Public Enemy, Naughty by Nature, and so forth. But two artists I've always admired and personally identified with, Lil' Kim and Yo-Yo. I admire their fearlessness to push boundaries while still maintaining the image of just a girl from the neighborhood. They are perfect examples of how hip-hop female artists use their skills to champion confidence, self-expression. One of the things that I find most notable about hip-hop, though, is its ability to transcend the boundaries of music and to build up ju uh, justice movements, particularly racial justice movements. During the Ferguson Uprising, which I hail from, we were out on the streets 24 hours a day, day after day, night after night. We would always have music on in the background. And almost always, without fail, hip-hop was what we played. The music didn't just bring us joy and entertainment, because in those moments, it was that that gave us joy, it was that that gave us entertainment in between the tear gas and the rubber bullets and all the violence that ensued against us. But it fueled us and it fortified us to keep the faith and to keep the fight even in between all of that. One song though that I remember playing consistently, a song that frankly became a rallying cry for us, one of them was Fight the Power by Public Enemy. The lyrics of this song were both uplifting and grounding at the same time during the moments that were hard. And believe me, almost all of them were dark, hard, vicious, vile. These lyrics, this song reminded us to fight. It reminded us why we needed to hold on. It reminded us why we continued to show up. It reminded us why we were out there and it gave us a feeling of hope that this was something bigger than us and that something better was possible known as freedom and true equity and equality in the United States. You see, hip hop is a form of expression. To really know hip hop is to really understand that hip hop is more than just music. It's movies, it's fashion, it's community, it's art. Hip hop is a way of life, it's a culture, it's a global impact. Through rhyme and beats, hip hop has allowed individuals, particularly black folks, to speak out on injustice and be heard. Hip hop is the purest form of free expression. There is a reason it is the most popular music genre in the United States. There is a reason it is taught and studied in schools and colleges across our country. It deserves to be celebrated. It deserves to be recognized as our good congresswoman is doing here today. And it deserves to be elevated. It has had a profound impact on our society, our economy, and our education systems, and our sense of belonging. Its impact cannot be understated and it cannot be denied. I'm so proud to join you, Congresswoman Kamala Gadov, and my colleagues, um, and uh, to Tupac's family, introducing a resolution to celebrate and mark the 50th anniversary of hip hop and to re recognize hip hop's national, political, economic, and cultural influence. Thank you again um, for allowing me to join you. Congresswoman Bush is not the closer. We're actually going to have Congresswoman Nakima Williams close. So you've heard, uh, you know, about West Coast rap and hip hop, East Coast, uh, some, yeah, some some Kansas, Missouri, and now you're going to hear from the Dirty South. St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, like, sorry. Hey. My, bad. My bad. It was a test. It was a test. Ultimately, I think what you're hearing is that hip hop is magic. It is magic. It is so I am Congresswoman Nakima Williams, and y'all, I proudly represent Georgia's fighting 5th Congressional District. We're in the South, y'all. 
I'm here today because you cannot tell the story of 50 years of hip hop without Atlanta and so many of the cities that I represent in Congress, including College Park, Decatur, and East Point. Some of my colleagues here may think I'm biased when I say this, I'm not, but we owe a special thank you to Georgia's 5th Congressional District for our contributions to hip hop. So thank you for the introduction, Congresswoman Kamala Dove. Thank you for your work here today, for leading the Congressional Resolution celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Thank you to my colleagues for joining us in leading this resolution because y'all, it takes all of us con to continue to tell our stories and uplift what is happening in our communities. To set Shakur, this is a solemn day for you and your family. So thank you for spending this time with us. To Ray Love Tyson, today is an important day for the Tupac Shakur Foundation and I hope that we can build on the legacy of Tupac. 50 years of hip hop. What can you say about an art farm that started from humble beginnings on the streets of New York City and has now become one of the world's most important art forms? Y'all, I'm young enough to have never known a time without hip hop, and I'm grateful for that. I grew up in rural Alabama in a home with no indoor plumbing and no running water, but this unapologetically black art form became the soundtrack of my childhood, my teenage, and my college years. While attending Talladega College, my friends and I would play Southern hip hop on our weekend road trips to Atlanta, right down I-20. Atlanta represented opportunity and the future for us, and hip hop was our soundtrack. You can see that I'm wearing my Outkast hat today, representing for Atlanta, because they are just one of the hip hop artists who are proud to call the 5th District home, and one of the artists on repeat in most of your cars still today. Not only do I have the honor of representing Helen and Delo, which Outkast immortalized, I shared the stage with Big Boy just last year as he performed in his hometown of East Point. And to be clear, y'all, I was just on the stage and he was performing. I was blessed with many talents, but yeah, that wasn't one. <laughs> but there are so many other hip hop luminaries who called Georgia's fifth district home, including my all time favorite, Usher, who's managed to blend R&B and hip hop and weave it together to create this new form. He's my all time favorite, y'all. I'm also proud to say that there's a whole ecosystem based in Georgia's fifth district for black Americans to generate wealth from hip hop. So even if you aren't a global superstar, if you're an artist, a producer, an agent, an attorney, you name it, you can come to Atlanta, come to my district and claim your share of this multi-billion dollar industry that we call hip hop. This is just one more tool in our toolbox to continue to close the racial wealth gap. When I think back to being a little girl listening to hip hop on the radio in the booming metropolis of Smith Station, Alabama, I remember Foxy 105 out of Columbus, Georgia, playing these sounds on the, on the streams. And I couldn't have imagined that today I'd be in Congress working to uplift hip hop and hip hop artists. But here I am today, a co-sponsor of the Rap Act, which protects the free speech of artists. We need this legislation as extreme politicians try to use art against artists, silencing their creativity. But because hip hop means so much to me and the people that I represent, I'll always do everything that I can to ensure that we not only celebrate these past 50 years, but we have 50 more and many more driving the culture in this country. But y'all, hip hop's future doesn't lie just within elected officials. Hip hop's future belongs to the people because hip hop has always, always belonged to the people. I hear Congresswoman Bush, y'all, when she starts preaching, it's time to listen. <laughs> because hip hop represents the people. For 50 years, hip hop artists have entertained us, inspired us, and influenced movements for social and racial justice. And I look forward to what the next 50 years has in store for hip hop with all of these people that I know I can count as co-conspirators for justice. So thank you for joining us to celebrate the first 50 years of hip hop. That's right. That was a true closer. So with that, we'll do one last round if there are any questions, and then we can officially close out because it's hot. All right, well, thank you all for joining. Thank you. Hey. 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 Hey.
What's up, fella? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uncle Punch.